So what's really going on in marketing? Who here feels like there's a lot of noise out there? Anybody frustrated? Well, last week, a new study came out and it talked about what CMOs really think about marketing. Now our stock market is up, which is fantastic, but according to almost 70% of CMOs, they feel like we're in a hidden recession. It's just, you know, it's, it's kind of a crazy time. So don't you wish that you had a white horse that could take you away and give you answers? Wouldn't that be great? Well, lucky for us, we have Beyonce's white horse who is gonna help us with that. So um, as we go through these slides, I, I love Charlotte and you'll see a lot of Charlotte sites. So this was from the Beyonce movie premiere party at the museum in Uptown. And these are the results from the, the study. There are two fixes that were recommended. One is to have a focus, and the other one is to expand marketing's impact, which makes a lot of sense. And that's where PR comes in. If you have campaigns and you, it can expand marketing's impact, then everybody wins. So what we're gonna learn today is I'm gonna take you from this hidden little island on Lake Norman. If you feel like you're the best kept secret in your industry and nobody knows who you are, we're gonna talk about PR mindset, integrating into marketing, AI++ tools, and you're gonna get a secret sauce. Does that sound good? All right, okay, before we dive in, who here does marketing right now? Okay, and who does PR? Okay, we've got a few, all right. And I do want to thank, first of all, before I dive right in, I do want to thank John and Jacob for the tech guys for getting my slides up. That was, so if everybody wants to give John and Jacob a, a round of applause. <laughs> thank you. I love you guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what Bill Gates said where he would spend his money. And it's on public relations. So that's if he was down to his last dollar that's what he would spend his money on and lucky for you that's what we're going to be talking about today and whenever i do a presentation i try to find the freshest results as i can so the cmo study was one week old if you want to know more about it you can listen to my podcast and i've covered it and then this is what are journalists looking for and that's really important to know so this is from cision and what we're finding is there are changing audience behaviors it's not like watching television, reading the paper. Who subscribes to newspaper? Who gets one in their driveway every morning? Like one or two people. We used to get the Sunday paper. I kind of miss it, but uh, yeah, it's changing a lot. So where do we see news? This is from Pew Research. Who here gets news on X or Twitter? Okay, a lot of folks. How about TikTok? When my kids said they were looking at TikTok for news, I'm like, are you serious? And they were, you know, a lot of people get, how about Facebook and Instagram? Okay, so we can see that news is expanding and for market, for journalists themselves, 44% of them plan to use Instagram for news this year. Facebook is third, it was fifth last year. So journalists are looking at social media as well. And then when you're thinking of what kind of content could I have for a press release, these are what journalists want the most. They want news, they want research, they want exclusives, they want access, and they want interviews. So if you're trying to figure out what to do, these are the, what they're looking for. So what does PR improve? This is from Fontaflora at Optimus Hall, some IPAs. I don't know if y'all like IPAs, but I think they're good at this, especially this time of year. So PR is like a good IPA. It improves almost everything with visibility, branding, customer experience, marketing sales, relationships, and even ROI. But somebody has to do it. And this is one of my favorite quotes. All the magic I've known I've had to make myself. And one of the things I'd like to honor you all with today is to think about how important marketing is. You all really, with the messaging that you do and all the work that you do, you are the ones that are changing the world. You really are. And sometimes I feel like, yeah, it's a really hard job. And people are like, oh, you're a marketer. That must be fun. It can be. But I really want you to appreciate the work that you do and how you change the world. 
So when I do a presentation, sometimes people are like, could we get into the how-to? And this is a very how-to driven presentation, but just to give you a taste of what you might be able to do, this is going to be a case study about a press release I sent out yesterday at three o'clock in the afternoon. It went to all these places. And by this morning, I was ranking on Google page one, eight out of 159,000 results for Digicom marketing speaker in less than 24 hours. Would y'all like to get results like that? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> all right. So let's figure out how we could do that. So uh, thank you uh, so much for the lovely intro. I, I, I'm going to just give you, a, I, I'm so happy to be here because I am celebrating my blog, which I started in 2006, Wired PR Works. The reason I called it that is because I felt like there's only one thing that really works in marketing. It's Wired PR. Forget it all. And that stands for words, intentions, routes, experiences, and design. That's really, that in my mind at 2006, that was the thing. And so here's one of my articles. It doesn't look like that anymore. And I thought, well, am I still a top 50 PR and blogger? Because every year I am, and, and this year I am as well. There are over 1,200 articles there that I've written. So if you want to dig around and dive around, have fun. This is a presentation I did 15 years ago in DC on new age public relations. So I've always been about being on the forefront. Sometimes I joke I'm the Forrest Gump of uh, communications because wherever something's happening, I'm there, like the moon launch, you know? So this presentation is also for you and your company. So I want you to be thinking about how you can promote yourself as a marketer. I feel like our personal brand as marketers is so important. So if you haven't asked ChatGPT who you are, I know you can't read this, but I'm just going to show you um, when I asked it who I was, it just gave a little paragraph. When I asked about my company, it went into all the services. And then this is perplexity. Has anyone used perplexity AI? Yeah, it's really, I, I think it's a wonderful search engine and it gives you a lot of information. So make sure you run yourself and your company through those. And then if you get one thing out of this presentation, it's if you see a chance, take it. So this picture is of me at the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. How I got here? Well, I was in Chicago and I did a presentation for Clemson University. I got in a cab to go to the train and, and the cab driver and I were talking. He said, hey, if you ever want to know how to do business, you should go to Germany. And I thought, I'm, I'm not ever going to go to Germany or not right away, but thank you. I got on the train, opened my email, and it said, your trip to Germany. And I was like, what? So Nokia was having a contest, and they said, here's what you need to do to enter. We're only choosing two social media experts from the United States. So without thinking, I typed it in, sent it in, and then I found out I won. And the real social media experts, their jaws were dropping when I told them that I won. They're like, you? And I'm like, yeah, I know, you know, it's kind of funny. But when there is a chance, take it. And with this conference, I was kind of a last minute in addition. Thank you so much. I really love this opportunity, but I could have said no. So really think about that with life and with marketing. If you see a chance, take it. So what is panoramic PR? And if you like hiking and you like flame azaleas, this is the time to go. So you're going to see some photography throughout the Carolinas. And when I drove in today, I heard James Taylor's song, Carolina on my mind. I thought, oh, wow, this is such a great day. So PR to me is personality and reputation. And thank you so much to Fernando. Can we give Fernando a round of applause for his presentation? I mean, that was phenomenal. And it teed up to what I was doing. And let's also give Sunny a, a round of applause for her presentation. That was such a great framework on strategy. And this is for you and for your clients. This is the personality archetypes by Sally Hogshead. And it turns out that I am an avant-garde, which is a mix of prestige and innovation. You should take this yourself because what it does is it tells you how the world sees you. And when I saw that, I thought, is that right? And I'm like, well, that's who I want to be. So I hope so. And then this is another one you could do. It's called Crystal Nose. And this will sync into LinkedIn. And what will happen is it will give you the personality profile for the people you're trying to look for. So this would be cool if you have some really great um, 
uh, customers. And I know Fernando mentioned talking to him. I know Sunny mentioned doing surveys. I had one client who told me, I want you to call 50 of my top customers. I said, you want, I said, okay, I can have somebody do that. He goes, no, you're going to call all 50 of them and talk to them. So I did. And believe me, it was a lot of work, but we came up with even a vocabulary that the customers had that he didn't know about. So it's, this is something that will give you some insights we could never have had before. So I love Crystal Nose. And then the other part is we've got personality and reputation. And reputation is really, it's, it's everything. It really is. And I think about, I was doing some training for a company and I really, I felt kind of funny about doing the slides. You know, when you train for somebody else, they want you to use their slides. And so I kind of mixed them up and moved them around. And I thought, is it just me? And I Googled the company. There was one bad review, just one. That was it. And there was one response. And it was from the owner of the company who said, do you understand what you're doing? You're, you're really tearing my company apart. Well, that company dissolved. It just went away. So you have to be really, really responsive. And one thing we talked about at lunch, is it Kate? Is that right? I think that's her name. Anyway, we talked about Christ. Is it Kate? Okay, Kate, what's the name, your, name of your company? And you're out of? Okay, so Kate and I were talking about crisis communications at lunch. And that is something you just have to have in your mind. And that's one thing PR can help you with too. And a lot of people are thinking, oh, we don't have any problems. It might not be your company. It could be the industry. It could be the weather. But you have to be prepared to respond to crisis crises. It, you should be in crisis mode at all times, even if it's a good time. Because if you don't respond, your, your reputation is going to be ruined. And if you're looking for a book, this is a book about reputation. The funny story about it is I'm the LinkedIn expert, but I wasn't asked for my permission to be the LinkedIn expert. I just got this email that said, hey, guess what? You're going to be in this book as the LinkedIn expert. So I called him and I said, um, did you, did I miss something? Did I give you permission? They said, no, but we just thought you'd be really excited. And I said, yeah, okay, I'm happy I'm in the book, but... You know, but anyway, it's it's um, how digital business reputations are created over time and lost in a click. So reputation management and monitoring is something that has to be always on. So let's talk about what are your unique brand traits. So does anybody want to just kind of shout out what one of your unique brand traits might be? What's that? Curious, that's a really good one. I love being curious. My cat's really good at that. <laughs> All right, what else? Compassion, that's a good one. Other brand values. That's good. Transparent is something we all should be. Anyone else? Dependable, very good. Anyone else want to jump in? If you don't want to say it out loud, just make sure you write them down. Or if you don't know them, you need to find them. And this is probably one of the most important projects I've worked on in my entire life. Yes, it happened 25 years ago, 25 years ago. And it was for Sears. At the time, Sears was a Fortune 50 corporation. And it was my job to write this article called I Am Sears. And so what we, we did was we had this contest called Take Me to Your Leader. And we went to the people inside the company and we said, who would you nominate to have one of these leadership skills? And they were integrity, diversity, innovation, customer satisfaction, development, ownership, business competency, business relationships, and teamwork. That was 25 years ago. So I had the delight of talking to the person who nominated the winner and then the winner for all of these. And then five years later, I met with someone and I had this magazine with me and they said, how did you get that? And I said, well, I wrote the article and it's, you know, I, I like to show people work I've done. And she said, I was at Sears and they're using that as the training management tool. So it's something that, and it was called Genius by Reagan when it, when it came out. It's not really about me, but this is something you can do right now. If you're trying to tell people what your company is like, yes, it's about the customers, but do not forget the people who work for you. 
because they are what they're as important to your customers in my mind. They really are. And then these, this is a picture of me with these women who we, I worked with. We were the dream team. And if you're interested, if you are interested in anything about employee communications, there is a podcast called EE Voice. It's hosted by these two ladies, Sharon and Sharon. And I was interviewed by them last year. It was one of their top five episodes. It was about nostalgia because nostalgia is a big trend. So with public relations, there are a couple of different models. I'm going to show you this peso model. Has, who's heard of Ginny Dietrich and Spin Sucks? Anyone? You should really subscribe to her blog. She's, she's out of Chicago. But anyway, it's peso, paid ads, earned publicity, shared social media, and owned content. So this is a model that's pretty easy to get. But it, this is how you really integrate PR and marketing all together is the peso model. And the way we do it at my company, at Corey West Media, is we have the four wins of marketing, which is digital, direct, dynamic, and data. And we always have something going on in the lab. So right now in our lab, we have rapid refresh branding. And in 45 days, plus or minus a week or two, we're taking companies and we're completely updating their brand, their logo, their website, their content, their photography. So they are coming across as being reborn. It's really, really exciting to see. We've got our first client through. So this is something for you to think about. You know, what are you doing digitally, direct? How are you relating to customers? What kind of dynamic stories do you have? And then measurement is so important. So that's our framework. Here's your PR checklist. We're, we have keywords, headlines, story, format, call to action, and content. Now, Fernando talked about keywords. To me, keywords drive everything. And I don't know what it is about search. Did you ever go to Search Engine Strategies in Chicago? Yeah. I had a media pass. And I was like such a search nerd. I just hung out with these people. It was so much fun. I think I still have some articles on my blog. But you really, and this is um, SEM Rush. So if you really want to start with a great press release, you want to make sure that you have keywords that you're using so that people can find you. And just like he was showing wire cutter, you know, their keywords, you need to really, they, they can integrate with what you're doing on your website, but it has to be a way for not only just uh, people who are searching, but also journalists, social media. It's to me, keywords are, are really like the foundation of everything. You can also do news jacking, which is something David Meerman Scott talks about. Has anybody read his book, The New Rules of Marketing and PR? The ninth edition, there you go, yeah, the ninth, watch, the ninth edition is coming out in a couple of months. And he wrote his first one in 2007. He was brilliant. He included about 120 bloggers in the back. And I was one of them. And I said, how did I get in there? And he said, you rock. And I'm like, I just got started, but thank you. So I do have an interview with David on my podcast it's, that's really um, informative. But he says, if you can take a trend and news jack on it, so it could be Taylor Swift, uh, you know, it could be weather trends, it could be the economy, um, it could be something that's popular in culture right now. I don't know, is anybody here a Cody Rhodes wrestling fan? Okay, yeah, so maybe there's a way you can news check that, I don't know. But you know, there are ways that you can integrate what's already going on. So I like to think of it as instead of trying to throw your own party, go be at somebody else's. And it could be an event that you're going to too. So that's news jacking. Now, the next thing that's really, really important is a headline. And your headline needs to be short and sweet. You can make it longer than this, but Google really likes 60 to 80 characters. And you're going to have your keywords in there. It should be emotional, catchy, and newsworthy. What I love to do is I run my headlines through a couple of different analyzers. You'll see share through, and then you'll see monster insights. Share through will take your headline and it will give you a score on three different levels. So you can see if it's grabbing people, if it's emotional, and it will really tell you if you're on the right track. The other thing I like to do is read it out loud, which sounds kind of silly, but you know, if you read it out loud, you can see does it have a good feel to it. Sometimes I'll write 50 or 100 headlines. Uh, it doesn't really take that long, but especially if you're playing with the keywords, you want to make sure that you have them syncing the right way. So um, that's headlines. The next thing you want to do 
is you want to figure out with you want to think like a journalist and they have something called an inverted pyramid if you did anybody study journalism where did you go to school yay that's a great school isn't it My, our neighbors have kids who run well they used to run for nc state they just graduated but i had no idea that campus is so big it's really nice yeah so um Anyone else study journalism or business writing? Okay, where'd you go to school? UNC Charlotte, we live in the university area. Love that school too. All right, so we've got a couple. If you have journalism questions, these folks will be happy to answer them for you. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so we've got who do you serve? What do you, what do, you do? Um, when do they look for you? Where are they? Why do they need you and how do they find you? So it's pretty much who, what, when, where, why, and then how. So that gives you a really good outline for your press release. Would you agree? Okay, all right, so I have the, the seal of approval here. The next thing is writing, and this is a prompt. It's a chat GT prompt, you can, GPT prompt you can use for a press release. So if you wanna take a picture of that, you can. And I study business and technical writing at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And I did a pretty good job. My, my teacher said, I found a writing job for you in Chicago. And I said, I'm not going to Chicago and I'm not going to be a writer. Well, guess what? You know, that's kind of what I did. But did anyone else go to school at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign? Anyone else? My husband. <laughs> This is my husband. Um, his name is Bruce, and we had that wire cutter example about best running shoes. But he's run 101 marathons. So if you want a really relevant personal, yeah, you can give him a round of applause. Yeah, <laughs> he can give you the first-hand perspective. But anyway, we have over 1,100 Charlotte area alumni. So that's us together. And I was just thinking about going back to school and writing. Well, that was a lot of work to do that. But you know what? Now ChatGPT can pop up that press release so quickly. You do have to edit it, but it has speeded things up a lot. Now, then what kind of formats are you going to have? And if you haven't been to PBS Charlotte, they do have a lot of events at their studio. And this was there. It was really fun. But it's not just, it used to be press releases were double spaced, typed. And when I used to write them, I would go deliver them to the local newspaper. They knew me. And the receptionist, she used to like tell me to get out and I would just walk in and she's like, oh, hi, you know. But now when you have a press release, you've got so many formats, you know, you can do audio, video, and the more you can send out, like even with images, the better chance you're gonna have of getting coverage. So one of our clients was the finest, in my opinion, but probably a lot of people's too. I know they are their top, but uh, kitchen and bath designer in the Chicago area. And the reason they got A plus top notch coverage is because they paid a lot for photography. So their rooms look like, you know, model homes and they were, they're gorgeous. But if you can have photography that goes along with your press release, that's great. Or you can hire somebody like my husband to come take pictures. Uh, so anyway, um, and then, you know, having a podcast, is um, uh, really good. You know, you can interview people, and um, that's those are some other things. And I think a landing page is super important. So if you have a landing page, you need to have to have somebody. They need to know where to go. I get a lot of press releases because I'm on a list of technology journalists. I can't tell you how many don't tell me what to do. So you need to tell them where to go. And then you need to have a call to action. And you don't want to send a message in a bottle. This is from Blooming Fall Arts. So uh, sign up, interview, freebie, event. Also having contact. Uh, this is something that seems pretty simple. But if you don't tell people uh, your website or social or even your name, which sounds kind of funny, but you need to have all that. Now let's talk about leveraging AI for PR. And if you want to know how brands are leveraging AI, I would recommend listening to this podcast replay. It's from Brand Smart in Chicago. They only do it once a year. It's with American Marketing Association Chicago. And uh, they will, you'll, you'll hear stories about marketing and PR and leveraging from companies like Claire's. McDonald's has Cosmics, which are these new um, drink place, drink, uh, they're like another planet full of drinks. But anyway, it's a good, good one to listen to. It's an hour long. 
So how can you leverage AI for PR? You can ask what SEO keywords would I use? And it can help you out with that. You can also take three or four competitors' press releases and feed them in and say what keywords are they using. Uh, you can ask AI to help you develop the content. And then you can even ask it for distribution. So where should it go? Who do you recommend I send this to? And then you can use it for tracking as well. So um, I'm going to show you a couple tools for that. And you can use it to develop, for, to develop community. So I'm going to just pause for a minute. Do we have any questions so far? Anything you want to know more about? We do have the catch box, so if you have a question. Or is anyone working on um, a story or an idea that they'd like some more input on? Hey, um, quick question for you about um, whether this being an election year, it makes it harder to be able to get your to get placement in the commercial world for publicity. Is that is it harder to do that between the Olympics and the and the elections happening or special events like that in a given year? That's a great question. Of course, we head into November. It will be. But I have to say, I've, I've never seen anything like this. It started at Search Engine Strategies. There was a huge session on Obama and social media and search. He was really the one who started it all. And his director was Caleb. Gardner, who's one of my friends with social media. So that really started it. But now we've gone way, way beyond that. So trying to get a reporter's attention might be really hard, you know, because it's but what you can do is you can go back to newsjacking. So if you know there's an issue, you don't really have to endorse a candidate. But uh, we did have someone in here. You do dust suppression, right, which is really fascinating if you talk about dust suppression. But, you know, that's an environmental issue. And I feel like we're all called to do to to, to really uh, align with the values and the causes that are important to us. So whether it's nature or hiking, you know, those are, are great things you want to talk about. And you can do that no matter what other company, whatever company you're in. But yeah, there's going to be a squeeze for news. But you know what? If you have good news, I think people are going to be relieved. Wouldn't everyone be relieved if? Um, you, you saw less political coverage. Could I get some applause for that? I mean, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, there's so much. OK, that was a great question. Thank you, Michael. And Michael is the next speaker, so make sure you stay for his presentation. I'm sure you all will. It's going to be fantastic. OK, another question or any kind of project that you're working on? OK. All right, so then let's uh, talk about AI guardrails. And this is, it's really, before you put something in there about your company or your client, make sure it's okay. Now, there's a good reason to do it, because if you want AI to know about you, then of course it's okay to give it the kind of information. But if it's something top secret, if you have something, I was talking to someone who's in pharma over there, right? So if you have a drug trial coming out that's not really public yet, you don't want to feed it into ChatGPT and say, what do you think about this? Because we don't know where it's going to go. It's kind of like it's turning our information, as my friend Andy Crestadina says, into average information. It's just putting it all in a blender and spilling it out. And you also have to ask, is it really real? Because AI, has anybody ever put in something and AI hallucinates and sends back stuff? Have you, have you had that happen? So, yeah, yeah. Does anybody want to share their best AI story of what you've done with it and how it's worked for you? I'm always curious. Okay, right back here. I'm so Ready? glad you have that catch box. Okay. That is really nice. Yeah. Um, I'll use AI just for like technical understanding um, in my industry in digital marketing. A lot of conversation around like identity and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and so I've gotten some article sources that, you know, you go to Google them, and check them and read up on them mm -hmm. and they don't exist. Um, so that can be something that it's been pretty interesting from AI. And what do you, have you used it for marketing projects? Um, yeah, I use it to produce like LinkedIn content. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And how does it work? Um, so as an example, in uh, digital marketing with all the changes in privacy, there's a lot of 
alternative identifiers that are coming out to replace cookies. Okay. Um, and they can be convoluted and hard to understand. Um, so I just try to use that, you know, the classic explain it to me like I'm five. Yeah. Um, as like a way to, you know, explain it, share it, and spark conversations. Have you tried LinkedIn's AI? I have not. Okay. Has anybody else tried LinkedIn's AI? If you have the premium account, it will suggest that you have, have you tried it? How'd it work for you? <laughs> How funny. I'm the one with the catch box. And uh, anyways, well, I found that, um, yes, it will make suggestions. It's very interesting. It will actually insert itself into an article or a person. Mm -hmm. If you're looking it up, it will show down at the bottom different options you can click. And if you click on it, it'll generate like a mini response. In some cases, this can be useful because you can have it generate a content and then alter it, make it your own voice, and then post right then and there mm -hmm. something that's relevant to that. Other times, it can lead you down a rabbit trail if you're curious about something like a particular product or a service or you just want to know more. Mm -hmm. um, I actually personally showed up as one of the LinkedIn experts in some of the audio video side of things that shows up on my profile. But if you dig in deeper through those, I noticed that there is an option in some of those way at the bottom. It'll show a little AI thing. You can tap on it and it'll generate something from the article and other sources for you in real time. It's an interesting little tool. Yeah, it's very cool. And that's why a lot of PR people are starting to do PR for AI because of the reason, you know, you just mentioned they've got these suggested prompts. So you don't even have to search. It's going to tell you what you should be searching for. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Yes. Question. Wait, here you go. <laughs> um, so I work for a company that makes sustainable label materials. Okay. And it's a Finnish company and we are quite cautious with like how quick we are to market to promote a new product or innovation. Um, and so I want to ask, you know, you talked about AI speeding up the process of creating press releases and things like that. How do you see in the digital age, the like impact of time to market versus like having kind of a more strong SEO optimized press release and things of that nature? Do you feel speed to market is still important? Okay. So how does time to market differ with AI versus the traditional approach? It's a lot faster. I mean, it's, I've been to, I feel like when I went to Chicago, it was AI wasn't just in the air, it was a tsunami. I mean, it was just blowing everybody away. And I've been to several presentations on it. I just, I, I cause I've always been like an alien who's waiting for a spaceship to come in. You know, that's, there's that spaceship, but what's after that? You know, um, I am seeing companies saying it's speeding up processes by 25%, 50%. And that's why in marketing, we're losing people. I think, was that your question? No. Okay. Um, so for our company that is more cautious to like wait and release yeah. something, is there an opportunity for AI to like help us make an impact if it's not quick? If, do you get what I'm saying? Like maybe the product has been out for a little while, but we don't have, you know, all the like certifications in place. We want to say that this is truly sustainable because it's certified by this third party. Okay. So we're not announcing the product yet because we're waiting for whatever thing it is. So are there opportunities for AI to still make it impactful if it's not, if we're not announcing it very quickly? I, I think it's, I, I would say it's great at content, but I wouldn't expect it to do a lot more than that. So I think you're back into working with your company. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thanks. That's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. But it is, it's, it's interesting, you know, um, Ethics is a really big deal with AI. Does anybody have an AI policy at their company? Okay. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? I saw her hand go. Okay. So here you yeah. go. We don't use it. Oh, <laughs> okay. We, that's a policy. And it comes down to who's going to own the content. Yeah. What's the regulations on it? So my company is very strict, right? I can't even check my email, my personal email on my phone. Oh, wow. Without going through the VPN. So yeah. it's a cybersecurity fiber company. So we're just um, waiting to see how everything's going to roll out. Now, with that being said, when I do the SEO or the SEM headlines, mm -hmm. I can go through the application that we use and, I'll, you know, they suggest certain things. So we do use it for that. But other than that, we well, don't. for a company like yours, then what you'd want to do is you'd work, want to work with a vendor that would give you a secure spot that would 
be safe and it would just be AI only for your company. Yeah, and they're they're not there yet. So they're just well, there, there is one out of Atlanta. So yeah. I heard him speak in Charlotte. I mean, my but your company's company isn't not there, there yet. yet. I think there are a lot of companies that just don't even want you to talk about it. But anyway, so uh, let's move on to, okay, now you've got your press release. How are you going to get it out there? And there are a lot of different ways to get your information out. And I do want to tell you about a kind of new one. It's called Source of Sources. Has, did anybody do HARO, which is help a reporter out with Peter Shankman? Yes. Okay, now have you tried Source of Sources, his new one? Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's really a brilliant guy. He's, and he has, if you have anybody who has ADD, ADHD, he's written a book for kids about it, The Faster Brain. So a uh, wonderful person, but this is a two way street. You can go there and look if there are opportunities for you to contribute to an article. And I've gotten placed because I've responded to, to queries or if you have a query, you can go ahead and send it in. Another place is Muckrack. Does anybody subscribe to Muckrack? You probably know. Okay, Muckrack, if, you, if you're interested in political news, uh, they do, or any kind of news, they do a rundown of the best of the best journalism every day. And if you send out a press release and you are a journalist, you can be included in their database. So it's a great place to look for journalists. And also, if you, if you think of your company, if you have someone in your company who's a thought leader, does anyone in their company have thought leaders? I'm sure you all do, right? So, yeah. So if they had... They could be positioned in a press release as announcing news, and then you, it could go into muckrack. But we have for different things for media, it's not just journalists. Uh, we did see how we've got a lot of different ways that even journalists are using social media. So it could be influencers, um, podcasters. I guess podcast advertising is really effective and it's not very expensive. I got this off of a podcast newsletter. Does anyone have a podcast? because there is a podcasting conference in Charlotte this weekend. If you're interested, contact me and I'm gonna be there. But there's a lot of different ways you can get your news out. And then if you want the all-in-one approach that uh, will help you write, connect, journalists, connect with journalists, track results, you can go with Cision, Coveragely, or Meltwater. Uh, Cision has been around for a really long time. Has anybody used any tools like this? You have? Okay, so let's have Fernando tell us how they work since you've got the experience. <laughs> well, uh, if you have this PR department inside your company, Cision is a mass have uh, resource of all yeah. information right. and to connect with the right journalist and even to publish ideas that, that you have. So, yeah. And for SEO, well, that's the top, top of the niche if you are in the marketing world. Right. Yeah. It's also an investment. I don't know how much it's it pricey. costs. It's pricey. It can yes. be really pricey, but here's a tip. If you tell them that's too much, sometimes they keep going down on the price. I never bought it, but they're like, well, how about this? And I'm like, eh, I don't think so. But typically a lot of agencies use Cision. Meltwater is another one that agencies use. If you're really thinking that you want to integrate PR more and more and more, it probably would be worth looking at. And to a small business, it might be, oh, that's a big investment. But to a bigger company, it might be the best money you've spent. Part of it is because they give you such good data and they tell you where their news releases showed up. And, and it just it's, it just makes your, your workflow a lot easier and more effective. So these are some pretty inexpensive ways to distribute your press release. One is EIN Presswire, PR Log, and then Webwire. So EIN Presswire is the one I'm gonna show you my results on that I did show you before, I've got a couple more. PR Log is great. Uh, it's, it's free or you can pay a little bit more and then Webwire is probably $40 or $100. So the one thing I would say is send out more than one and EI and Presswire has a deal right now. I think if you buy five, you get three free. So if you've planning on getting into it, get into it. Another way, does anybody do Google alerts to see when you're mentioned? Okay. Have you tried Talkwalker alerts? TalkWalker really gets in and gives you more uh, feedback. So this is the press release I showed you earlier. These are all the hits and all the mentions of my name within like four hours. So that's kind of fun. And if you're looking for, well, where did, where did it appear? It'll tell you. The way that people used to measure ROI 
on press releases was impression. So how many people actually saw it? And when Claire's in Chicago talked about their campaign, they talked about how they got 11 billion impressions with PR, but impressions, it's kind of hard to, to translate that to sales. It's not like pounds to dollars or something, but this is an actual place where you can see where it landed. And if you need to show links, you can see them. So this is an example of a class I did in January. And I'm just going to show you the results for that. This is the press release. So it shows you, you know, you've got the headline, a lead in, the story. There's a quote pop out, a couple different um, images. And so there's that. And then these are the results. So this is, to me, these are the keywords. It's not like, you know, the keywords are they're the ones I was going for, new PR masterclass, PR masterclass for speakers, and PR masterclass for thought leaders. So within a day or two, this is the results I got. And that's on Google, not Google News. So it's impressive. I do have to tell you there's a disclaimer. It doesn't stay forever. You know, you put it up there, and I don't know how long it what would last, but if you are looking for a way to get some splash and get some attention, it's a good way to do it. What do you think of that? Okay, so I said I was going to give you the secret sauce. And so this is an ebook I wrote. It's called Perfecting PR, How to Quickly Attract Attention, Clicks, and Customers. And I was the PR expert in this book, Success Secrets of the Online Marketing Superstars by Mitch Meyerson. So if you would like, who, first of all, who here feels like they've gotten some value out of the presentation today? Yay. Okay. So if you'd like even more value, you'll get this ebook. And the way to do that is to scan the QR code or type in the link and then you type in power up. And what happens is two things happen. When you go to talk it at, you'll have the opportunity to review my presentation, leave a, a, a recommendation if you'd like, and then you also get the link to download. So I'll leave that up here for a minute. But as a speaker, it's really important to know what people think about what you're talking about so that we can improve our presentations. And if you're interested in being a speaker, I would like to invite you to check out National Speakers Association Carolinas. I was on the board for two years and we just had our big event in Durham last weekend. And if you're looking for a group of uplifting people that are out there sharing good messages, it's a great group to go to. So National Carol NSA Carolinas. And then this talk a dot, this is, if you have people in your company who go out and speak, or if you do, this is a great tool to have because then they can come back and you can see what people want to know more about. And um, anyway, that's that. So, all right. So what we've learned today, uh, we talked about PR mindset, integrating into marketing. We had a lot of tools. You got the secret sauce. And if you like sunflowers, the Draper South Carolina sunflower field is going to be in bloom in a couple of weeks. So I would su suggest you all go there and check it out. And uh, with that, I just like to say, you know, this is, I'm celebrating our fifth year of moving to Charlotte. And this is such a wonderful community. It's, it's been so welcoming and it's, it's wonderful to meet you all. Everybody in this room has such great stories. Where are my Impala ladies? There they are. Okay, so when they told me they did Impala parts, I didn't want to, I didn't want to ask if they meant Chevy Impala, you know, but that's what they meant. And if you talk to them, they've worked with people like with Stranger Things, the movies. That's really fun to talk to. All the people where the Charlotte Hornets, Hornets people right here. Yeah, you know, so you, we've got a, a major, major team players here. And I, I wish I'd had a chance to talk to each one of you because I know you all have such great stories. And I just, when I majored in marketing, I, I, I didn't really plan to devote my entire life to it, you know, but it's marketing people are just some of the most fun people to be around. So we have like a couple more minutes. If anyone has any last minute questions, I'd be happy to talk to you right now. Or if there's something you want to share with the group, what I would love to know, though, is if you want to tell me one takeaway that was really important that you'd like to share with the group so we make sure nobody missed it. OK, we got one right here. And tell us your name, who you work for, and if you live, where you live. Thank you. 
there. Uh, my name is Kirsten. I work for Zintegra Gov. Uh, we're a small IT services and solutions um, company. Mm -hmm. And so we're specifically working with public sector, feds led. Um, and with that, like, I'm trying to work on getting more customer success stories, testimonies, some kind of press release out. But since our customers' data is so secretive, a lot of them are very hesitant about having their name and solutions within right. the same document. And I wanted to know if you thought it was still effective to put out something with the message of like, hey, we were able to help this town fix this problem or you know, vice versa. Like when you can't have the full story out there, is it even effective to post it? Yes, I think it is, because people have to know and know what's out there. We had this talk at lunch about crisis communications and cybersecurity and hacking and how it can happen to any company. So if you position yourself as a thought leader, you don't even have to say what you did for somebody, but you could even mask it. You could just say, we helped a company in, let's say, healthcare or insurance. And you don't have to give their name, that's not, but you know, just to get it out there and let people know that's what you do, mm -hmm. it's really important. And you know what? The media love those stories. They love them. Cybersecurity is huge. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I've been a partner in some of these kinds of projects with social media, with the PR people. Mm -hmm. It's really exciting and that is super newsworthy. So yes. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you. Follow up question. Actually, yes. just real quick. Sorry. Um, I'm also hesitant in getting them to agree to participate. Um, do you have any advice on like how to reach out to the customer and really get them to be gung ho? Well, if they like you, that's great. And I understand security is security. I mean, mm -hmm. they don't really want to talk about it. Uh, so you have to be careful. It's kind of like financial planners, you know, they, if they made somebody a million dollars, that person's, but they could talk about the integrity you have in your company, what you like to work with. If your leadership board is on a board, they, those people could talk about that. And the other thing you can do is you can have anonymous clients. I mean, not anonymous, but it could be their actual quote, but you could say like whatever industry they're in, but not their name. Mm -hmm. And they could talk about, because honestly, this is a big problem. So if they say that your company helped protect them and keep them, uh, keep all their data safe, then that's, that's really good for them as well. Because everybody wants everybody to be safe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah, you're welcome. Who else has a, a question or a takeaway? Who has a good takeaway? Anyone else? Okay, well, I'm going to let Richard Branson have the last word. Uh, <laughs> he says, publicity is absolutely critical. A good PR story is infinitely more effective than a front page ad. So I, I hope that you all have enjoyed this presentation. I hope you've in, I've inspired you to, when you see a chance, take it, that you've decided that PR is something you really want to integrate as personality and reputation. Now you know how to write a press release, you know your keywords, you know how to do a headline, you know who you want it to get out, and you know that you need to do more than one. So um, if there's any way I can help you ever, just feel free to reach out. If you go to my LinkedIn profile, you click a button, set up a consultation, it's all free. Believe me, I love to give information away. So um, I, I really enjoyed our time together and um, I hope to see you around Charlotte. Thank you. Have these um if anybody likes bookmarks i have bookmarks so